bars. He never, he don't take Xanax, man. That nigga was, them bars are how you go from zero to a hundred quick. And that's what it was. He went from zero to a hundred. Okay, so. Boom. So all everybody heard, boom, in the club. I was threw off like, oh, what's going on? But I know my brother just, you feel me? Welcome to Mogul State of Mind. We want to get into everything you got going on, and thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Okay. I want to start off. You're from Detroit, Michigan, born and raised. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. What side of town do you represent, or you say that represents you? West side. Now, there is very dynamics to the west side, so what a part is your stamp exactly? Uh, I'm from Brightmo, but like it's like I didn't had so many different like stumping grounds for real. second home. Second home would be like six mile. Mhm. And you got my brotherhood, Dexter, Linwood area. Okay, so you are all over the west side. Yeah, I'm, yeah, eight mile or you know. So primarily, what school did you go to? Because I understand you had this big old career, like you was a star in your own right. Yeah, I, um, you said what, high school? Yes. Uh, I graduated from university prep high school. It's called University Prep Academy High School, but short for University Prep High School. It's on the west side by like Wayne State University, downtown area. Okay, so you played football or basketball? Because I hear both. Yeah, I played uh, football. That was my first love, football, for real. So, yeah, I was heavy with the football stuff. Then I was, like, playing basketball, too. But I was nice with basketball, but I really just love football more for real. Okay, and I understand you got a scholarship because you was like, everybody was raving about you. You was a star. And a lot of people I talked to was like, we, he's, and you're very tall in person. Yeah. I mean, it was, cra it was crazy for real because I, like, my dad's side of my family from New York. So, like, my, like, upbringing, I played in New York, but I was, like, hot, like, high talent down there. Then I came to Detroit. I was playing for them, but I just kind of went. I ain't really never really get a chance to like enjoy it for real. It was always too much like stuff going on outside of school. For real. Okay, so back to you graduating from the college prep school. So then you go to college. When you went to college, did you play? Um, I went, the college situation was like really like first semester I completed, I was practicing and stuff. By the time second semester got here, I really, I had suffered again from getting shot and I stopped going to college just period. Like, so it really ain't get far from my college stuff for real. So. so what happened to like scholarship? Do you lose it when you get shot or you just stop no, all together? Well, I had got a scholarship from like Eastern and I was going to, I was doing a summer program and I had got, you know, into some trouble. So they basically like took away my scholarship. So I was going to college at Henry Ford Community College just to get my credits up and I was going to end up going back there, but it just never worked out for real. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Tato Ben Laden is here. <laughs> Tato Ben Laden. Okay. So you got into some trouble. You leave college. You say you're not dealing with college anymore. And you say you were shot. Yeah. I got yeah, I got shot the second the morning of second semester. So I had missed school probably like I had missed class for like probably like a week. Then I end up going back. I was trying, like, but it was just too hard. To, like, it was cold outside. It was just too much to get through the campus on crutches, and I just was like, I'm straight. Okay, right. 
Would you like to elaborate more on that incident? Like, what? you get shot. Was that due to, like, gang violence? No, no, no. It wasn't. No, nah, it was. Honestly, it, it ain't had nothing to do with me, for real. It, I, it was some girls and boys involved, and some of the guys didn't like the girls leaving, and they, you know, it went left. And then some more guys came, and I don't know. I just heard shots. I didn't even know where they was coming from. I just heard them and felt it. I knew I had to get shot. Got the fuck on, went to the hospital. So when you mean you got the fuck on, so usually when people get shot, they always say, like, you feel a burning. What was that feeling like for you? Shit, it was like a, a car hit my leg or something, like an instant impact. I don't really... The burning, that shit, I mean, excuse my language, the burning was kind of like, I was high, so I really ain't really feel no burning. It was more so like throbbing for real. Okay. It so wasn't really burning. Like the burning come like after effect, like sting and burning. So you transported to the hospital or your friends take you? How yeah, does it go? My, my homeboy, yeah, some friends took me, yeah. Okay, and did you think like, oh, I'm, I'm, you about know, people die. panic, I'm hell about to die. Nah, hell no, nah. I knew it was just a leg shot, and I was high. I was like, just give. Me. The, where it happened, that was a close hospital by, so I just knew like, just blow through all the lights and get me there. Made it there, walked in there, fell out, and they took it from there. Okay, and you woke up like. Cause you say you fell out. Yeah, I fell out. My legs collapsed, but I went like unconscious in there. Okay. Yeah. So it was a flesh wound. It was like minor. It wasn't no surgeries. It wasn't no. It was traumatic that it happened, but it would. It could have been worse. So it was just. Yes, it I definitely. I bounced back fast. Long story short. Yes. So you never go back to college because of that incident and it just being too much for you. You never got a chance to really enjoy or to get to where you wanted to get to as far as with athleticism. Yeah, no, I just, yeah, after that, I, my mindset really changed, honestly. I wasn't really thinking about sports no more. Okay, so then... You get into the rap music, or is it just... Because I want to get in when you actually meet Dex Osama. Did you meet him before college, or was this after college? No, it was college. No, college, I ain't really... We weren't, we weren't in cahoots yet, but we had, like, similar homeboys already. Like, I had already... I was already hanging in his hood, but from... If I'm not if I'm not mistaken, he was in ju like juvenile, like or you know going through his own little legal situations, and I think like after he got out from that, that's when we met or whatever. Like, okay, so you meet each other probably at what age frame would you say? We was young. It probably was like. Probably like 19. 19, okay. 20, 19, 18, 20. something around there. Yeah. Okay. Adulthood, like. Right. Yeah. And y'all become best friends, hang with each other every day. You're known as his right and left hand. Yeah, it's crazy because, like, I ain't, you just know how you just meet somebody and then y'all just click, like. That's how it was with us. We just was clicking. Like, it never was a day he woke up, like, ain't want me with him. Like, or it wasn't a day I woke up, ain't want him with me. Like, you just feel that genuine, like, I don't know, you can't really just explain it. You know when the nigga, your, your day one, a day one ain't really for me, like, nobody I knew all my life. That's not, that's a different type of day one. Right. He was my day one, like, my man's ever since I, like, locked with him, like, day one from the first day. There ain't never been no flawed, janky. Like, it's just been all love. And what you think that click was between y'all? Do y'all have, like, the same? Like, because a lot of people don't know Dex Osama personality, and they don't know Tato's either. You seem way more quiet and laid back. And he seemed more, like, loud and boisterous. 
And then nah, the two not... don't make sense. A college student. No, 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 no. Even when I was like in the sports, though, I had a hot temper, though. Like it. That's how it was like people that knew me like knew like, man, either he going to go to the league or he going to be something. He going to be too much to handle. Like, but I didn't look at it like that. I just looked at it like having a bad temper type stuff. Feel me? So I think we click like just both being like alpha males type shit, if that makes sense. Yes. That and I ain't sense. always been this humble and laid back. I've been in prison. Now I'm a lot more humble and chill. Mm -hmm. Like. Okay, because we try to compare the two, the outside where we, we just, like. If you want to compare the click, like, just say why we click so fast and just always was on the same page. For one, we both like getting money. For two, we like getting fresh like jewelry. And we both just ain't taking no bullshit from nobody. So being an alpha, you're going to lead, by example. You gonna, you just ain't going for no BS. How we say in the city, I ain't going. Right. Bro, I'm going. But, you know, you got to know when to be. You know how it go. You got to know when to put on the gas and let off the gas. That's what a lot of us don't really know. Okay, I definitely can see that. Like, both sides, you know, I could see that. Definitely. You know, so what I wanted to get into more is how the rap start. Like, when do you guys start rapping? Like, when do Dex Osama starts rapping and you see it going I, for your friend? Like, he always was rapping. Like, his homeboy, Turk, Bagman Turk, used to be, like, having a studio and stuff. He used to always, like, just do his shit for the love. Other people used to be knowing that he used to rap. Like, he got songs way before he took off for real. Like, he been... Wanted to rap, but when he got hot, I don't know you. What was the question again? When you guys, you know, started rapping, I, I think it's like um, he got hot around the time like that. Death on me, I guess that was. That's when we was just like, I don't know. It was a crazy time. It just was a lot going on. When did was, you notice? You know that my friend is blowing up. He's becoming what he said. Like what we when it started sinking in it, like when it started sinking in. Yes. When Meek used to be calling us every, like every day. <laughs> yes, because Meek the city... was like a big brother for him. He still is a big brother, but like it just was like starting to hit. Like it, we'd be up at three in the morning. Meek would call. We'd be up. Like posting pictures, Meek don't approve of. He a call like, man, Tato, y'all take that down. Like that's when I knew, like, oh man, it's time to change our life. I stopped wanting to be like seen so much, so much as being active in the streets. For real. I started being like, I don't know. I think bro started realizing it too, but it just was like, I don't know. Okay, so you get Meek Mill as like. Big brother advice, calling y'all at three in the morning because we watching it. The outside world, we seeing Nicki Minaj twerking the debt so summer. We seeing Meek Mill. We seeing Days Loaf. We seeing tweets from other major rappers like Shy oh, Glizzy, all them. Yeah. Yep, we seeing all that Shy Glizzy doing songs with him. We watching everything on the outside, and we like he they really taking off. So the whole city was happy because this is like the first what we would call her Detroit, possibly drill rapper to get some attention, some shine. Yeah. Because we have our big shines, you know, we have our Bodie James, Eminem. We had all the commercial rappers, but we never had the side of Detroit that most people know of, what the city is known for being, you know, the yeah. murder capital. Yeah. So to you, is you realizing, you know, hey, Meek Mill, we getting advice. I got to start taking this serious, too. But you said, do you think you were more serious, taking it more serious than Dex? Um, not on the music side, but, like, I think as far as, like, trying to chill for the better cause, I think I was, like, starting to see that more than him. But... It's kind of crazy. He was seeing it, though. Like, he was trying to... Bro was trying to get his shit together, for real. He was trying to get his act together. Okay. Now, after all of this happened, y'all get a big record. He get a big record. 
death on me. Hmm. Was you there when he made that record or your first time hearing uh, it? I wasn't, I wasn't there for sure, but a lot of people don't even know we ain't even like that song for real. And that's shocking. So why didn't y'all like Death on Me? Like, we didn't never ride to that song, for real. Like, he only performed that song, and that was that. Like, I don't know, because, like, his his mama, that, that was a real, like, that was a real big, like, moment for him. Like, a personal moment for him and his mama that I don't even know about. Like, like my mama said I got Death on Me. He wasn't just saying it to make it sound good or make it, it sound good, it sounds sweet. But that one, really, like, it was a good, it was one of his big achievements. Like, it did good selling and stuff, but, like, on the personal side. It was, we didn't really, like, like, ride to that song or nothing like that. But it was, like, rewarding, and it was, like, booking shows, and, you know, it was productive. It was, like, in a good, like, it was the, the hit song, you feel me? Like, okay. But, so that being the hit song was actually the song he was kind of scared of. I wouldn't say like scared of it was just like a bad personal moment with him. Like imagine your mama telling you like, you know what I mean? Boy, you got death on you or however she said, I don't really know how my mom's mama said it, but. I saw the interview where she did say, she told her son, he said he had a bad dream. Yeah. And did he ever talk to you about that dream? Cause yeah, it was... yeah, he talked. Man, his grandma used to make us pull over and pray in the middle of like the night, just call and be like, I want y'all to pull over, start praying for us. So it was, I mean, that shit was crazy. Okay, so surprisingly, this song ended up playing out exactly what his mom had told him, unfortunately. No, I won't really say that. I don't, it's so much, I don't, like, it, it kind of, it's just so much into that story, like. Because mm -hmm. the song is called Death On Me. My mom said I had death on me. And we. I recall the interview with her saying, you know, Byron, you have death on you. You have to change your ways. You have to stop this. You have to stop that. The Reaper is coming. Yeah. But I don't mean, I honestly, I don't think that was his time to go for real. Okay. Do you, so do you believe in it's time to go when you die or? Yeah, hell yeah. When God call you, it's your time. But I feel like a lot of that situation that night could have been prevented for real. Right. You believe in interceptions, like people can make it their time to go or other people or... Circumstances can speed up the process. Yes. The wrong circumstances. Yes, I agree with that as well. Before we go to that night with you and um, Dex Osama, you got two tattoos on your face that say, fear God. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So what's your spirituality? I'm a God-fearing man. I really grew up around it because my grandma used to be on my head when I was, like, young. Like, made me go to church unwillingly, though. I didn't want to go. Right. But she used to make me go. I got baptized when I was a baby, probably, like, second grade. I never did after that. So I acknowledge the man above, for sure. Okay. So you grew up basically a church kid. I did, too. But you grew up a church kid, unwillingly, which we all say that, you know. No, it probably wasn't. It was unwillingly when I was young. But right. once I embraced it, though, I used to, it was, it was what it was. I used to pray. It wasn't no big deal. So let's go to that night that you feel like circumstances, you know, may have played the factor in Dex Osama's death. So The night, the night that happened. The night that happened to him. Uh, the yeah. unfortunate night. Yeah. But before we go there, you wasn't even, you wasn't even out a whole 24 hours the day Dex Osama died. You so right. where were you? I was locked up in um, Lansing, Michigan. I was, um, you know, I had got into a situation where 
Police had me in custody. I had to bond out. I was in a rush to bond out because it was the mother of my first child birthday, September 6th. That was the, okay. you know, so. He died September 7th because it was 12 p.m. at night or a.m. in the next, you feel me? But I was trying to bond out to get out for my baby mama. And, you feel me, I ain't, that's what I was locked up for. I was locked up for some stuff in Lansing. I bonded out and probably like four o'clock in the afternoon. Okay, so we watching him for a few weeks, I would say, like just posting you, free Tato, this is my man. No, this it, wasn't is it. A, it wasn't free. It wasn't a few weeks. It probably was like two, three days straight because I bonded right out. I ain't really sit in there that long. I bonded out. Like I had my own jewelry. Stuff like I collateral. I wasn't trying to sit in there for that long. Okay. And I had never been in trouble before, so they gave me a bond one like I was this big notorious thug, you know. So Right. So you get the bond and your friend, he's like free you for two, three days, cause the last picture we see on Dex Osama page is you, him, and another guy. Yeah. Yeah, that's the um last picture we took. Yeah. And that's September 5th, or is that... 6th, that's September 6th, yeah. Okay, so September 6th, you take a picture with your right hand, man, it's you and him. So, you get, you get out, you bond out about 4 o'clock. What time exactly do you get with Dex? Mm, I called him immediately, probably after I got out. Probably as soon as I got to the city, I called him, he probably pulled up. In the summertime, it get dark, what, like around eight, nine. So it probably was right like nine, eight, nine o'clock, yeah. Pulled up, happy to see him, you know, happy to see his brother. I'm happy to see him. That's the first thing I'm going to call as soon as I get back to the trenches anyway. So it was like, shit, I'm back with my right hand man. He's so back with his right hand man. Okay, right. So then we see another picture. You out. So we get that picture, and everybody, I guess, when people see their friends get out, they go and celebrate. But you said you was getting out for your son's mother's yeah. birthday, right? Yeah, correct. So, but instead, did you go see your son's mother ever no, that I, day? No, I really was procrastinating, like, trying to get high. Like, I was on the block with the guy. Feel me? I was gonna take her out to eat, but I wasn't really, I don't know how to be no good boyfriend. Well, I didn't know how to be no good boyfriend, so I was BSing her for real. It was already down there, nine, 10 o'clock. So, okay. yeah, I wasn't going with her. By the time it, 10 o'clock, she knew I wasn't going out with her for real. Okay, so you end up with Dex instead. So, allegedly, you guys went to the strip club, and that strip club was called the Crazy Horse. Okay, so is it just you and Dex, or is it? No, see, uh, see, a lot of people don't know, but before we went to the Crazy Horse, I really didn't want to go. Feel me? I told my brother I didn't want to go, which is Dex. I told him like, no, nah, bro. I ain't. First of all, it wasn't ever really his idea to go. If we're being honest, it wasn't even really his idea to go. We had another homeboy that his girl had introduced him to prior to this night. We had been dealing with him. He wasn't new, like at this night, but when they met, it was through Dex girl. You feel me? The nigga who pressed the issue for us to go, which was. TP, he dead now, you feel me? But he died when I was in prison. But he pulled up with the idea to go to the Crazy Horse. It was his idea, he pulled up. I don't even know what made him specifically keep saying the Crazy Horse, but that's all he kept saying. Like, come on, y'all, let's go to the Crazy Horse, bro. Let's go to the Crazy Horse. I'm telling Dex, like, hell no, bro. Is you getting paid? We not about to go out. Man, I'm straight, bro. I ain't trying to go out. He like, come on, bro. Let's show the city you back out, bro. You feel me? Now, we having this conversation standing up outside the car. You feel me? 
Now, mind you, earlier this day, I didn't know that bro had been popping Xannies with his girl that he was with when he was alive, you feel me? Okay. So his mind not really, he ain't himself right now, but I'm not knowing this because they ain't told me that they've been popping bars. I pop bars. This is what I do. So when we having a conversation, I'm thinking my brother normal, but really he already hides a kite. Feel me? So when I sit in the car and close the door, bro, put that, bro, put it in the drive. We, we driving now. I'm in the car. Can't. I ain't finna hop out while I was driving. This is my brother. I ain't really tripping that we in the car for real, but I really don't want to go to the crazy horse. Right. So you actually don't want to go. Really, Dex kind of don't want to go, but y'all got this Home, homeboy yeah. pressing the issue. Yeah, exactly. He, But, like, I didn't really look at it like, why this nigga want us to go to the crazy horse so bad? But I should have been thinking like that, though, for real. Like, what's at the crazy horse? Why you ain't saying this club? Why you ain't saying that club? Right, out of all clubs, the crazy right, horse. because the people who was throwing the party that night, I don't know. I guess, I don't even know, really. I don't know the east side like that. You know what I'm saying? But it was some east side guys party. Yeah. Okay, you think TP might have been, like, affiliated or yeah, you like I When I went to prison, I started thinking like this. You feel me? Because... After Dex died, I went. I got locked up two months later, so I'm not on the streets. You feel me? I'm fighting a case, and I'm locked up. I'm thinking a lot. So he was the one who wanted to go out, and she, his girl was with us. Dex's girl was with us. You feel me? Okay. I'm in the back seat. He driving. She in the passenger seat. We driving. Okay, the car's in drive. So y'all pull up at the crazy horse. Before y'all pull up at the crazy horse, is there a conversation? Do you because that would be considered your last conversation with him, people would think. Before you guys walk in. Yeah, it was, no, it wasn't really a lot of conversation. We pulled into ballet like we normally do. Feel me? We like stashed our little belongings. You feel me? I had told you feel me? I had, I don't know, we got in there with our, you feel me? We we got access to what we had access to in the club, so, you feel me? I don't really know. We ain't really had no talk, but his girl did tell him, like, babe, I'm going to make some money tonight. If you're going to be mad, don't, don't come in here. She, oh. she said that. I got to so give her respect. I can't lie about that. Like, okay, because she was a lot of the blame to his death behind this circumstance that happened this day, too. So that's good to hear. So his girlfriend that is a worker at she the was crazy a horse. Yeah, she, she was a dancer. She was a dancer, yeah. So she's a dancer, and she tells him, hey, babe, we're going to make some money tonight. I'm about to make some money tonight. If you're going to be mad, don't come in. Yeah. That's what she told him, but it was, I don't think, I think she knew who Party it was to a little bit. That's why she probably said that. Only person who didn't know who Party it was was probably me and him for her. Like, I don't even think he knew who Party it was. Like, if he knew who Party it was, I don't think he would have wanted to go. I don't think, if I would have knew the dynamics of what the situation, I wouldn't have let us win. I got that much authority with my brother out of my nigga. That shit did. We gone. But I didn't know who party it was. I didn't know. I didn't know. I just really didn't know. But she did say that. If you're going to get mad, I'm about to go in here and make us some money, babe. If you're going to get mad, don't come in here. And his exact words was, man, I ain't tripping on that shit. I don't give a fuck. Feel okay. me? Come on. We, gonna, we good. Okay. So you walk in. How long are y'all in the club exactly? Like, what would you say was the time frame? Is this the 15, 20 minute hour? Well, as soon as we walk in there, the honor of the crazy verse, he embraces, you feel me? Tato Dex was popping. I'm about to get y'all a booth. I'm going to get y'all a bottle. What y'all want to eat? So, you feel me? We sit right down. It's probably 
10, 15 minutes go by. The food came. They playing music. They playing Dake's music. Uh, another rap dude, Timmy, so I snoop. He had came and hollered at me, like walked across from the little, come say what up to me and Dex. But, um, yeah, that's probably it. Like, well, that been about 20 minutes. Yeah, it been about 20 snoop minutes too. once we've been in there. Okay, so y'all in there about 20 minutes. So when do y'all actually see the girlfriend of Dex Osama? When do she come out and begin to dance? Probably like a good. I don't know. I was high. I had to take a bar. He had gave me a bar before we got to the club. So when we got in there and started drinking the champagne the owner gave us, I probably was losing track of time. But if I can estimate it, it probably had been like 45 minutes before she came up, started dancing. Okay. Feel me? She didn't just go on the stage, though. She went to a specific booth, like two booths over from us. Okay. Started dancing on this some guy. I didn't know who he was at the time, but I know who he is now. But okay, so she began. And I to guess dance. she began dancing on him, which was antagonizing Dex because the guy she dancing on, I guess him and Dex don't really like each other. But I don't know that. Feel me? But so it probably been like a good. It probably been an hour in there by this time, or the same 45 minutes. It was happening so fast. Right. So like, we didn't even get a chance to really sit in there and get comfortable for real. That's how fast it was. Like, we got comfortable probably for like 30 minutes. Like, it happened that fast. If not 30 minutes, 45 minutes. We ain't staying there no hour and a half, two hours. It wasn't nowhere near that close. Okay, so she's dancing for a guy that's into it with Dex Osama or probably have an that issue had with words. him. words. I don't think they was into it. I think they just didn't like each other. Like, okay. So, you don't know this at the time about the alleged guy she dancing on that have that had words with Dex Osama. Yeah. So, do he at least nudge you? Like, I don't like them niggas. You see them. What's no, going no, on? No, 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 no. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I was laying back like, I was to the point where I was laying back in the booth like this. Now, imagine the stage, like, over here a little bit. It's a booth right here that ain't nobody in, and then it's another booth over there. If you in a crazy person, you in this booth, you right by the bathroom. You feel me? Like, the the bar right here, and it's the bathroom walk right That's This the booth we in. And I'm sitting on this side of the table in the booth with my head back, so I'm not really watching. But all I know is, bro come to me like, hey, bro, let me see this. See the gun. I'm thinking, he thinking I'm about to be on some BS in here. So, so I, I ain't questioning. I just give it to him. like. But it made me sit up. You feel me? It made me aware. Like, hold on. I give it to him. I wasn't thinking nothing of it. But I was aware. Like, hold on. I was watching when he came and got the gun. Okay. So once you get him the gun, what happens? Uh, shit. Soon as she came back over there from dancing on who she was dancing on, Brody lost it. He just mushed her, poured the champagne bottle all over her face, and just went like he was all right. Them bars, that's what I'm saying. Like he wasn't himself. He wouldn't have crashed out like that, bro. I know my brother, he wouldn't have crashed out like that. It was just them bars. He never, he don't take Xanax, man. That nigga was, them bars are how you go from zero to 100 quick. And that's what it was. He went from zero to 100. Okay, so. Boom. So all everybody heard, boom, in the club. I was threw off like, oh, what's going on? But I know my brother just, you feel me? Bro just tweaked out. I hop up, you feel me? If I can remember, I think he ran right up on old boy, like, ready to just do him in that bunt. You feel me? He was ready to. He was already on go. He was on the honey. But I wasn't letting bro crash out like that in no club. This my brother, this nigga. The bread and butter, nigga. Hold on. Get up out of here, bro. You tripping, gang. And he didn't give me no heads up. I didn't know. I was surprised just like everybody else. I didn't know he was finna tweak out like that. Right. Yeah, so we get outside. I'm trying to calm him down. I'm really 
want us to get in valet in our car that's supposed to be parked at the door. I'm waiting on that car to pull up. While we waiting on that, I'm trying to tell him, like, bro, what you want? You feel me? Like, what, was, what you do that for, buddy? He like, man, he fucked them niggas, man. He own that. Because we see the footage tape. Yeah, so I'm you're talking to him. Like, right, you're... I'm, your back is to the I'm door. I'm the only one who could calm him down. Like just like he the only one who could have calmed me down when I'm if he tell me, bro, chill out, you tweaking or you tripping, I'm gonna be like, all right, bro, you right. Or if he if he tripping and I'm telling him chill out, he chilling. He was trying to like he wasn't really still on her time when I was talking to him. He was calming down. Like if valet was out there like they supposed to do, they pulled off and been it would have been over with. But I don't know why they didn't have our valet car. Still to this day, I don't know. Right, because you said y'all get out at VLA. Now, back to your back is faced towards the door. Right. Because there is footage camera of this yeah. death on camera. Yeah. So your back is towards the door. Yeah. There's multiple people next to you. We see people running in the ray and everything. And Dex Osama is in front of you. Yeah. So then on this same footage, we see a person... Look like they snuck on the side of you and the hand come out and shots is fired. Yeah. So these shots are fired so Past close to your... Yeah, fragments hit my shit, yeah. But I ain't gonna lie, it, it was like, right before that happened, it was somebody who came outside, you feel me? It was like trying to defuse the situation. Like, he really was like, came out on some... Damn, Dex, bro, why you do that to my party? You feel me? Why you disrespecting my party, Dex? My brother on go. He not trying to talk to nobody. He like, nigga, fuck you, nigga. What you trying to do? Eh, nigga, the... He still on go. Mine, it been like two minutes that went by. Valet still nowhere to be found with our car. Right. So he the only one out here who can protect us. Cause the, other, the other protection is in Valet, which is bigger protection. So... If my brother asked me for our protection in the club and I give it to him and we outside and our other protection nowhere to be found, what can I do? Right. So you have no gun on I don't you. have no protection, nothing. But my brother, you feel me, who I'm trying to calm down, I'm really just trying to get in the car, pull off. So I can take, get on his ass when we get back to the crib. Right, because we see the conversation. We see that it's talk between him and someone, but we didn't know that someone was you. Yeah. So that talking. someone is you, and we see him pacing back and forth. Yeah. And we see the person so talking. So I guess, I guess in the midst of, bro, cutting into whoever old boy was, you feel me, who came out like, damn, why right? you try to def feel me, why right? you do that to my party? I guess he went back in the club or whatever happened, and I guess Valet just still nowhere to be found with our car. All this going on, Valet still nowhere to be found. Which is horrible, which is, I don't, like, I still don't have no answers to that, bro, like, but I need answers to that. And I know who owned that establishment, and I need answers to that. Bro. Right, definitely. The city would like answers to that, too. So, Valet was definitely responsible for him not getting in the vehicle and being able to pull off at a certain time, which could have, you know, prevented a death. Basically. Yeah, they could have helped out a lot. They could have helped the situation a lot, for sure. So in that And my brother was the most hot, hottest artist in the city at the time. Why our car not at the ballet? At the front door. If we tell y'all, leave our car at the front door. I don't understand it, bro. Still don't understand it. Right. So in that two-minute span, waiting on valet and having a conversation, yeah. someone creeps up on the side and a hand come out. And it's a fire that's on camera. The, the fire yeah, like sparks just sparks. He could have killed me. Shit. If he was on that for real, he could have hit me on my top, then tried to hit my brother. Like, I don't know why he ain't hit me. I don't know, bro. He, I, on some real shit, I wish he would have hit me, bro, because I ain't. You should have just took me with my brother on some real shit. Because I ain't. I didn't want to be there, and I ain't want to leave without my brother neither. That shit fucked me up for the rest of my life, man. For real. Right. But yeah, he shot right past me, though. So you hear, I'm sure you hear your ear ringing. I'm sure you think you may be hit. What do Hell you... Yeah, I thought I was grazed or something. I knew something was going on. I... 
I felt them fragments. My first instinct was to run. For okay. real. Because I know I can't do nothing without no gun. My brother, he got the gun. I know he ain't finna just not blow his pole. I know he finna get the... Shit, I never watched the video for real, but I know he probably was letting that bitch fly. I can't watch the video. Right, so you run to the right. Is that correct? Yeah, to your right, but it's my left. Right, okay, so you running to your left, and you're running towards... I'm thinking the ballet cart back there. That's what I'm running for. I'm trying to run to my protection shit so I can help my brother out. So I can, you feel me, help myself out. Shit, bullets don't got no name on them. I'm trying to get to my protection. Right. So once you hit that left, you realize car still not here. I don't see the minivan. Nowhere to be found. And do you see dicks at all? No, but I hear gunshots. I hear cars, I hear gunshots. And I know he like to the right of me, feel me? Like closer to the door in the street, like where traffic at. Okay, so what happens next? How do you end up getting to him? Is it? Um, soon as I like took my, like hit a left and didn't see the car, I called him, bro, where you at? Like I'm at the, I'm at, I'm at the gas station. Like, I'm hit. I hop a fence, fall over face first, then it just could have broke my neck, shoulder, anything. I just threw myself over that bitch. Ran around. I still don't see ballet with the car. Now, mind you, I didn't hit a fence back here. I didn't run back on the main street. I'm running straight to my brother. I'm so vulnerable right now, somebody can hit my top. I'm running to the gas station. Feel me? I got to run back past the crazy horse because I came out on the side street. Now I'm running back past the entrance of the crazy horse back by the gas station. But I'm, I'm, I I'm, got to get to my brother. He didn't tell me he hit. I don't even care if nigga might as well kill me now. That's what I'm thinking. So I ran to him. I don't know. Bro was moving a lot. They say he threw the phone in the gas station, came back out. Through the gun, like he was moving, bro. Adrenaline was pumping. I don't know if he would have slowed down. With uh, if that probably would have helped. I wish he probably would have slowed down. Okay. So when I get there, he just laid out. I'm talking to him. So I'm like, where, where you shot at, bro? Where you hit at? Like my chest. I'm like, bro, where the gun at? Cause I don't know if he didn't empty it. I didn't want to pick the gun up and told it myself. It might be bullets in there, anything. You feel right. me? Right. I'm just too vulnerable out here. Nah, I, my brother's shot. I don't know who out here looking. It's crowds. I know I don't got no protection. So, so I'm really, a... like, scared for real. I'm really, like, on some risk I was spooked. I right. didn't know if I was going to get killed, too. It was so much going on. Right. Then the other people we came with, they didn't pull it off. I'm not even knowing. They didn't pull it off. Like, the other two people we was with, the other two guys we was with, the nigga who I was telling y'all who was like, let's go to the car. Yes, first. TP. TP, he didn't pull it off with somebody else was in the car with. He didn't, the other nigga didn't got hit up too. I'm not even knowing this, but okay, I'm just so. at the gas station with my brother. I'm asking him, bro, what's wrong? You all right, bro? You know, where you hit? He like in my chest, I lift his shirt up. It's a little hole, like right here. I'm like, bro. I'm now nah, it's like a crowd now, like everybody realizing this decks or something outside. It's like they like, oh, they in, they ecstatic. Like, I'm like, man, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. So the crowd is just around. They Nobody just around. calling. Nobody they thinking just, the call. They just, just like in a maze that is him. You feel me? I'm talking to him. He like, bro, I love you. My body getting weak. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. No, ten is word for word. Like everything I'm telling y'all facts. Like, I love you, bro. My body getting weak, bro. I'm like, bro, I love you. You're going to be straight, bro. Just take deep breath, bro. Just breathe slow. I'm like, I, it was a police had pulled in. A police car. I asked police car, like, can we put him in here, bro? Where the ambulance at? Let's put him in here. We, me and one of the police officers put him in the back seat. So I tried was... to ride with him. They like, hell no, you can't. No, can't nobody be back there with him. Hell no, man. Get out. 
So you was waiting on valet and the ambulance. And the ambulance. So and finally, I don't got no ride. I'm out here. I don't got no ride. I, my, hey, nothing. I'm just out here. So you, dangling. you out here, no gun. No gun. You see no your gun. brother on the ground, basically. You watching him say what you did you think those was your last words or did you think he was Hell gonna make no. it? That bullet was so small, that bitch was like this big. I didn't think he was gonna check out from that. Hell no. But Not all the shit we be on. Not for no little ass pea shooter, man. So he's talking to you calm or in the panic when he's on the ground and you're over his body? He was calm. Uh, I don't know. I, it's like he just was reality. I guess it was reality for him. He was like, I love you, bro. My body getting weak. I love you. That's all he kept saying. I don't even know what that means. But my body getting weak, but I guess. Right. It was a feeling he probably was sensing at that time, at that moment. Yeah. So the police begin to escort him off, right? Yeah. So is there another officer there with you or you just No. Do you know. hear anything? How do you find it's out? Officers about? still on the scene, yeah, it's still a couple officers on the scene. Like they walkie talkies and stuff going on. Uh, yeah, that was going on. And you I think hear I heard him like say something like he ain't make it or something. But by that time I don't know, I think he was either close to the hospital or already there. I don't know. But I was waiting on my ride. It was it was crazy because this female that I didn't know was asking me for a ride. I think she used to work there. She knew my name. I didn't know who she was, though, but I ain't trust her. So I ain't getting the car. And she was in the Porsche and everything. Still to this day, I still won't even remember her face if I seen her. But she probably was really trying to help me, though. But I ain't trust it. It was too much going on. Right, so at this time you in a, you just heard them say over the dispatch basically he didn't make it. So yeah, are like you he ain't, like I don't know if the, I, if that one thing is that words it just they said something that rubbed me the wrong way. But by that time I had already called my little brother and he was flying to me. I heard him flying over the speaker. He was flying to me, got there in like four minutes for sure. Okay, so now you get in the car with your little brother. We fly and... to the hospital. Fly straight there. By that time, my mom saw me there. A couple other they got guys there. My mom saw me wasn't trying to kick it, though. She wasn't trying to kick it. Okay, so at this time, when you get there, is he dead or they don't know yet? I don't know. He was in the back. He was in the hospital in the back, but I think... He might have had already checked out, but you know how they delay it. When you went there, they, be, they be trying to save the family the pain. I think that's what they was on, but they, I think he had already checked out. <clears throat> okay, so when do they come out and tell y'all? Or do they? I, well, I was so threw off. I wasn't even in the, like, hospital pro. I was, like, outside. Like, my mom wasn't in the hospital. My mom was thinking something else. I was... I had devilish t intentions. I wasn't even trying to. Right. So, now he's dead. You find out he did. It get to you. And what's your thoughts at that moment? Where, where is your mind at at that point? That this really did happen and you in a... It ain't feel real for real. Hell no, that shit ain't feel real at first. I'm like, hell no. My brother ain't just leave me. Y'all got me fucked up. I went home to my baby mama house. Because we had stayed outside at the hospital for a good hour. I wasn't really trying to stay out there, so I had just left. Feel me? Went to my baby mama. I'm lying to her like I wasn't even at the club. She like, she know the news, though. She like, they saying your brother, your friend just died, all this. I'm like, yeah. She was like, what you doing? I'm like, hell no. Lying to her. Video footage come out. 
I'm all on camera talking to the nigga. She like, you was there? Why you lying? I said, it was your birthday. I wasn't trying, you know I wasn't trying to go there. I really ain't want to go. But by that time, she wasn't even focused on her birthday. She was trying to be like. She understood so, what yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. So that was good to hear. Now, you become the bad guy in this whole situation. The ex die. And rumors, the streets want to say, oh, he left his friend. Yeah, they told he me He wasn't that. there. <laughs> yeah, I ain't get a chance to read the comments to, like, to probably, like, I, after I came home from prison. Because I ain't really, I didn't have Instagram when he was rapping. So I wasn't really, like, paying attention to it like that. But I was hearing about it, though, for sure. Right. I was so hearing about it, like. You go to prison... Two months after his death, is that correct? Was it two yeah, months? Yeah, I got locked up two months after he, after bro died. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you get locked up. Do you see on the news in there they caught the murders of Dex Osham, the murderers, the people that were responsible, or? No, I didn't really show it. I don't really think I, they were showing it. But I won't. I won't really like. I was fighting my own high profile case when I think, if I am mistaken, yeah, they was fighting. I think, I think the old dude was fighting his case. I think he was in the county, but I don't think the other dude was in the county. So I don't know if it was, it was two months after he died for sure, yeah. But I had I went I didn't go straight to prison. I was in the county for like eight months. Okay. But, so I was trying to watch it on the news, the updates, but I really I was trying to get on the floor with the old nigga who was in there for it. Right. That's what I was on. But y'all never ran into each other. Hell no, he wasn't gonna run across me. He was No disrespect, he an old he an old fella. I was young. He ain't want to run across me in there. Right. But you did end up running into the other one that was like a alleged sus suspect. Did y'all yeah. run into each other or did y'all yeah, see each other? Yeah, we was in prison, yeah, in quarantine. It's this place called Quarantine. Yeah, it's like like level five for us. Like, they walk you to child, walk you from child. Like, you can't come out your cell. It's like a birdcage. Full of flows, like four, five flows. Okay. And they make people walk like flow by flow, so it ain't like they letting everybody out to walk to you feel me? Right. To lunch or child or dinner together, it wasn't like that. But yeah, we was in quarantine together probably for like a day or two. They probably they rolled him up. He had already been in there for probably like a at least. Almost a month. That's all you're doing quarantine is like three to four weeks. And they ride you to your prison you're going to be at. So when I got there, he was already about to ride out type stuff. But yeah, we ran across each other for sure. Okay. So what was that like? Was that like? It was, it was disbelief because I had, you know, he, the other dude, not the old dude, but the, the other. The younger dude. Yeah, the younger dude, he 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 from he he grew up in my hood with some of my big cousins, so it was like I had a chance to communicate with him through somebody else, and I asked him like, cause like I said, I never had watched the video. Okay. But I had been hearing his name kept coming up, like you feel me, like uh, you feel me. So I asked him when we was free. Before we get to quarantine, I asked him, like, bro, was you there, bro, shooting such, 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 such? He's like, no, nah, bro. So when we get to quarantine and I see him, I'm like, dang, ain't you lied to me, bro. I just sent you on the news and sentenced to that shit, bro. You was shooting, bro. What you? He like, man. I wasn't like he copped the plea. It was just like, bro, I ain't going to lie to you. Bro. I was on the run, bro. Dog was snitching on me, bro, trying to get self-defense, bro. I ain't. I'm like, gang. I'm like, listen, bro. I know what's going on. These niggas in prison don't really know what's going on. I'm like, I know you ain't killed my brother, bro. But don't be going around here with, like wearing that on your like. Don't don't be going around these yards wearing that on your shirt, bro. Like, 
Because prison is about respect. Like, yeah, I could have crashed and went to the hub. Feel me? Started a big war in there, but I'm a grown man, bro. I'm this life stuff, chestnut checkers. Right. So I had a man to man conversation with him. It didn't last long because they walk, the police walking behind us. And everybody in quarantine really know what's going on. As soon as I hit the compound, they knew Tato was there. Well, I couldn't even be low key. I'd never hit no prison compound my whole time in prison, just being low key. Like every time I hit a yard, oh, Tato here. So when he, when I rode in, he knew I was there. Before I had even seen them walking the child. Right. You feel me? So, but I told him, like, gang, don't, I don't want to hear that shit, bro. Don't let me hear you saying, uh, don't do it, gang. It's just, um, right. So, you get to prison, and basically, now you a superstar on the yard, basically. Everybody know you. Everybody, you can't even be, you can't even grieve at this point. Yeah, I ain't had time to grieve in prison. Hell no. Yeah, I was... Everywhere I went, shit, niggas wanted to fake be cool. Or a nigga was hate and jealous. But I ain't really had no, like, I ain't had to do nothing in prison. Like, as far as, like, earn no stripes, like, be her, go stat. Like, it ain't even like that in there anyways, but ain't nobody play with me. I ain't, I wasn't tolerating it. Okay. Did you meet any people in there that you probably cool with today or no? Hell yeah. I got bros from there, in there. Some of my niggas not coming home no time soon. I was a lifer when I first went to prison. Okay, because you had a high-profile case yourself. Yeah. That I was, was on the news as level. well. Yeah, I was supposed to go to level one, but they sent me to level four. So I had to just go with it. It was my first time ever being locked up. When they sent me to prison, that was my first time being locked up, like ever going to the county. So all this, I'm learning as I'm going. I don't really know how to jail. I don't really know what prison is supposed to be like. My mama, my aunt, none of my siblings ever been to prison. Uncles never been to prison, so I really ain't know. Bro. Right, it so you like, had to learn the jail in there, yeah, yeah. had to grieve in there, and you were sentenced for how long? They gave me four years, but I ended up going like an extra nine months because I was like dropping dirty for marijuana and stuff. You dropping dirty for marijuana in prison? So let's talk about that. <laughs> How is it marijuana in prison? It's a world in there. It go down. Everything, you got everything you want in there, but females that you can have sex with for real. Right. So I hear it's really expensive. How? It, what's the uh, most you probably spent on marijuana in prison? Well, I was kind of like, the person who always knew the person, like I knew the right people, so I really ain't have to pay like the regular prices. Right. I used to get the love, extra love. Okay. Now let's talk about your case because you made the news too on your own. One, well, once again. So you on the news again. You got this high profile shooting at the mall. Mm -hmm. So was that before Dex's death or is that after? That was two months after that. Okay, so. Two months after bro died. Okay, so after he died, before he died, it looked like you wanted to go like on a straight, narrow path. You wanted to get, you know, your life in order, take things serious. So after you, after his death, how do it lead to another shooting? I wasn't trying to get my life together that he died. Hell no. I wasn't on that. I wasn't in my right state of mind. I ain't gonna say too much. I wasn't in my right state of mind after he died. Okay. So that made you make probably poor decisions. That was my first real death for real. I ain't never lost nobody like that that close to me. Like family yeah. members, yeah, probably like, you know, be sad if family members die, but. Far and distance, never that yeah, close. Yeah, that was my first death. Like, the person that affected me still to this day. Right. Yeah. Because you still have all your siblings, mother and father. Yeah. You had grandparents, you know, aunts, friends, but never, you know, the dynamic of somebody on a day-to-day -day passing away. 
So that puts your mind in this array, I can imagine, what they call it now, PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. So you would say you did suffer from that? Yeah. Okay. So that leads to Fairlane Mall shooting. They want to say y'all living up to this name or whatever y'all crew name was called at the time. So Fairlane Mall shoot happens. You're in prison. When you get released from prison, what happens now? Now you're rapping. Now everybody is like, oh, the talent just didn't die with Dex Osama. Yeah. That's why I'm, I mean, I'm doing it for bro. Feel me? Like, I wasn't really rapping when he was alive. Probably if I knew what I knew now, I probably would have been rapping. Like, it's beneficial. Shit. That's, they paying black young black men to be entertainers. Right. I should have been trying to be an entertainer when bro was doing it, but now that I'm home, I'm I'm giving it a shot, for sure. Right. So you getting a lot of accolades for your music. Everybody's talking about it. You know, like I said, the talent didn't just die with Dex Osama. And most artists, it kind of do. You hear that from clicks, like, oh, the top man might have died and the artists nobody care about. But a lot of people is checking for you, like Tato next up. Appreciate so, that. Sure. No problem. So what I wanted to get on was, what's next for you? Uh, trying to be more serious with uh, creating more music for my fans that want to hear my music. Be more consistent. Videos. Probably get on some, some show ventures or something. I don't know. Anything I can for her. Okay, so it looks like you're taking it serious. And I think it's going to work out good for you. you know, Appreciate, it. Appreciate it's, it. It's coming good for you right now. So you still into talks like with the people Dex Osama was working with, like the Meek Mills. Is that still a open door there? Yeah, Meek still. I, I still talk to Meek, especially when he come to Detroit. Okay. And I was you, with him last time, oh, oh, that, like four months ago. Okay, how you feel about him, you know, rapping like Dick sometimes or getting a, a oh, pendant with his name on him? Yeah, he probably to do that. When I was locked up, I kept hearing him. He used to be throwing Dicks on like his shows, like the little banners, the backstage things. But Meek, Meek, ain't, Meek ain't fake when it came to like how he, he tried. With Dex, like he really was trying to show him a different lifestyle for her. Okay. I think if I take it serious enough, he'll probably at least try to swoop me up. I ain't really looking for it though, but I know he didn't gave me talks like, bro, if you take it serious, I got you type thing. Okay, that's good. That's always good to hear. So you definitely should take it serious. On another note, I wanted to bring up, so. Dex Osama is, you know, in Detroit, a lot of people say he was like a serial killer. Hell no. Like how they making these videos now, King Von, did you see the documentary? They say he was rap's first serial killer. And then when you look in the comments, they say, no, that was Dex Osama. That was Dex Osama. Yeah. So what do you think about that comparison? What do you say Dex was to you? Or what he is exactly that people don't know? Misunderstood. He was he misunderstood for sure. He good hearted. He love who he love. Shit. He was willing to die for what he believed in. Stand up type of guy. Made man. Certified. Smart. Intelligent, lion, lion hearted, for sure. Lion hearted, represent his Leo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Thanks. Okay. Hey, one question I want to ask. Okay. When you guys, what you just said out there, uh huh. How did, you know, Dick's on top of Mama treat you? Oh, yeah, when he, when he brought up the Mama too, I meant to get on that too. Okay.
So another thing, your relationship with Mama Osama, how is that? And how does she treat you? <laughs> Uh, Mama Osama, she, we, we, we good for real. I can't say nothing bad about Mama Osama. Uh, some people probably feel like, I don't know, some people got their own personal feelings of how they feel, she feel about me, but me and her got a personal bond. And then it's not like, I can't really, even if she do feel some type of way about the situation. Because I ain't going to lie, Mama Osama didn't really know the story, for real. Because I never really, I thought I had a conversation with her about what happened, but I never did. Like, so when I got locked up two months after he died, she went almost four years without hearing the real story from me because so many people was putting her head that I was the one who wanted to go out that night. So she probably had a reason to feel like some type of anger, you feel me, or like something, but I think we had a heart to heart while I was still in prison. I right. had a heart to heart with her right before I came, but I always used to stay in, like reach out to her while I was in there. She never, but she cussed me out on the phone one time while I was in there. She let me have it, for sure. I cried that night and everything. Swear to God, I did. But right now, we we good. We got a personal bond. We don't really talk every day. We don't got to. She got her own life, but I respect her. That's my brother, mama. So she got the right to feel some type of way if she do feel some type of way. I don't really think she feel no type of way towards me. I think we good. I ain't gonna say I think we good. I know we good. We we talk enough to know we straight. But for a minute, she definitely was mis misled on some information, though, for sure. Right. I think a lot of people was misled on the information. That's why it was good for you to come, you know, and finally oh, yeah, tell I your heard story. Oh yeah, the first month this time. Should nobody be confused no more. Well, thank you so much for coming. We enjoyed you on Mogul State of Mind. Thank y'all for having me. It was my pleasure.